Ken Aizawa, he's the vice president of engineering at the Tech. Karibu. Welcome, I was about to say. <laughs> I hope Ken, you know Karibu. I Karibu. do know Karibu. Ah, finally, yeah. welcome home. You're home, literally. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, Ken, uh, what has been your best experience so far here in Kenya? Uh, for how long have you been here? Yeah, so I've been in Kenya for about uh, a week now. Uh, and I would say the best experience uh, was definitely going on safari in uh, Masai Mara, mm -hmm. and, uh, but also just being in Nairobi, I think, mm -hmm. um, and getting an experience of um, a city really embedded into nature. I come from New York. I was born in New York. I live there now and work there now. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't really have such diverse animals, plants, trees, forestry, you know, and all of that mm -hmm. um, kind of m mixed in with, you know, these high-rise buildings and bustling streets and all of this. Um, so it's a really, really nice change. And, you know, it, I would love for that to be a part of New York, you know, like uh, just more green. Oh, wow. Um, Have you but. tried any of our delicacies? I've tried, uh, is it called Machama, Machuma? Yeah, Machoma, yes. Machoma, <laughs> yes. there we go. That was last night. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, I think I did pretty well. I think mm -hmm. I did pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, so uh, Ken, for someone meeting you for the first time, who is uh, Ken, uh, where is he from? Uh, from New York, of course. And, and what do you do, actually? Yeah, sure. So I was uh, born and raised in and around uh, New York. I mm -hmm. still live there and work there now. Um, I studied uh, computer science and philosophy in school, um, in uni, and now I work more on the computer science side, as a, as a, first as an engineer, now more as a kind of engineering leader in the organization, um, and I work at a company called The Take, as, mm -hmm. you, as you introduced, um, and we work on AI technology for TV and movies. Um, and uh, my focus has been on developing that AI, now managing a team that also that develops that AI with me, and um, deploying that AI uh, across millions of TVs uh, around, around the globe. All right. What is your most uh, treasured memory while growing up? Uh, my most treasured memory growing up, that's a great question. I mean, I guess I would say, um, I, there were a lot of really great learning opportunities um, mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that I had. Um, one of my most treasured one was when I studied music in New York. Oh, um, really? And yeah, I spent some time, uh, I played the clarinet, uh -huh. which is like a, a musical instrument. And um, yeah, and, and I, I studied at the school called the Juilliard School in New mm -hmm. York. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a really wonderful time for me, just, uh -huh. to, just to be completely focused in, in music. Fantastic. So, studying this conversation when it comes to artificial intelligence and just what the future looks like. Yeah. Uh, what is artificial intelligence and how does AI work? Yeah, that's, it's a really great question. It's a big question. Yeah. So, I'll start by saying that I think AI is, is sort of a misunderstood term. I think we read a lot of books or see a lot of movies where we see, you know, robots, killer robots or... Um, you know, some, some program that talks and speaks like a human. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to know that it's not, you know, zero and then one. I think there's a lot in between, right? And in a sense, we already have artificial intelligence today. Mm -hmm. The way we uh, organize uh, companies, right? And we have certain people doing some things, other people doing other things, coordinating across organizations, across oh, wow. the globe, across mm -hmm. supply chains. Mm -hmm. And we use software as a part of that. We use machinery as a part of that. We use computers as a part of that. That whole layer is a kind of intelligence that's not one human being, right? It's many, many human beings creating this kind of new thing, mm -hmm. a company, a government, a state. Um, but artificial intelligence is a technology, and I think what, what you're probably referring to is software specifically yes. that is able to process large amounts of data and turn that into really useful actions. Um, and what I'll say about that, though, is that it's, that is also already here. Right, and when you are on Amazon, you know, shopping for products, mm -hmm. and you are, you know, getting a recommendation for something, that's AI at work, mm -hmm. right? It's saying, oh, he bought, he or she bought this one product, 
And so I'll recommend this other one. Also on Google. Also on Google. Yes. Or when you're on uh, in Netflix, which mm -hmm. I spend too much time on, but anyway, for, if you're on Netflix and you're, you're watching a piece of content and uh, you like that piece of content, uh, Netflix is saying, okay, this person liked this content, what would they like? Mm -hmm. And let me look at everyone else that's like this piece of content and what they liked. Um, and the final thing that I'll say about artificial intelligence is that because it's so multifaceted, because as we already have it, the gains and improvements of artificial intelligence will not be straightforward. It won't be one-to-one. -one. It might automate certain jobs uh, in the future, like uh, I think truck driving is one that will happen in the U.S. at least within the next five to ten years. Mm -hmm. um, it might even automate uh, some of the work that doctors and lawyers do, mm -hmm. right? So you both, on all sides of the spectrum, both high paying, low paying, you know, middle paying jobs mm -hmm. uh, will be affected by artificial intelligence. All right, are we heading into a world where we will completely build intelligence that can be able to mimic human beings? For instance, the what you've said, like most of the careers will be, will be tampered or like if it's in a, um, uh, let's say an industry where uh, there's production going on, machines will be involved. So that means more people will, uh, in future, might lose their jobs. So mm -hmm. I will head into that in the, uh, in the future, whereby artificial intelligence that we build it, that we all uh, are completely just uh, 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 destroy job opportunities, and we just focus on the creating aspect. Yeah, I think, I think that's a great question. Um, and I'll, I'll start by saying that I, I can't predict the, the future, but what I genuinely believe is okay. that um, artificial intelligence and the technology behind it mm -hmm. is only able to automate very repetitive um, and uh, kind of time-consuming, um, but very simple, otherwise simple tasks. Mm -hmm. So data lookup, data entry, or driving, or things like this. Okay. And there are jobs that will probably not be able to be automated ever, like mm -hmm. creative jobs, for example, mm -hmm. right? Because we have to remember we're doing all of this, creating all of this automation, this prosperity to serve people. And AI is feeding data. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And as a result, AI will not be able to do things that only people can do, like creating art, right? Or um, in the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. working with people, um, and, and being with people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think what I hope is the future and what I also believe is likely the future is that there will be, you know, some what I call friction, mm -hmm. right, in the transition. There's always friction in, in massive change like that. And it might actually be, you know, somewhat of a painful kind of change in, in you know, if there are three million truck drivers in the U.S., mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. that might lose their jobs with this technology. But over the course of 50 years, I hope that makes, that brings humanity towards a place where mm -hmm. people are doing jobs that are better suited, more uh, creative, more, more human. Mm -hmm. um, and to serve human interests better. Uh, are there regulations put in place to know how far is too far? And is it actually even regulated? Um, I can only speak for the United States. Okay. I will say that I don't believe, I, I think there's some legislation for regulation that's currently in the works. Um, and I, I'm really glad you asked this question because it's a big, because it's a very big issue mm -hmm. um, in the US, I think, uh, and a growing one. Um, the regulation has mainly revolved around use of facial recognition technology, and um, there is a uh, scientist, mm -hmm. I guess leader, uh, CEO of, of this organization called the Algorithmic Justice League, Joy Buolamwini, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Joy Buolamwini, who um, has been really shedding light on actual some, some racial bias in some of the very uh, uh, commonly used facial recognition algorithms mm -hmm. in the States okay. by companies like Amazon or Microsoft or Google. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially what she found was that um, uh, people with darker uh, skin color would have lower accuracy rates for facial recognition and would be misidentified more 
uh, by those algorithms, by Amazon, than people with white skin. White skin. And that becomes a problem if police departments in the United States are using that algorithm mm -hmm. to track suspects mm -hmm. and try to identify criminals. That's true. Um, so it's, 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 it's a huge problem. And um, I don't believe there's been any significant step forward in, in regulation yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that it will come. Um, because right. it, yeah. Uh, okay. So, what are some of the strikes being made uh, as for as AI is concerned by the tech? In the context of our country, we have uh, you know AI is credited scoring. Uh, it's using companies in accounting in terms of algorithms and models to determine whether someone is qualified yeah. uh, for a loan. So, what are a couple of uh, strikes that uh, the tech has made? Of AI. Yeah, so we have a pretty fun use case, mm -hmm. thankfully. Um, all we're interested in, uh, to put it simply, is to identify the people, products, and places inside movies and TV shows. All right. And to surface that information on the TV or you know, maybe through the set-top box or online if you're watching online as you're watching so that you can learn more about your content, so you, you can interact with your content. Um, so let's say you know you're watching your favorite reality TV show, and uh, you like the dress that you, you know some uh, uh, contestant cast, yes. or character yeah. cast member is wearing. Mm -hmm. um, we make it possible for you to buy that on your TV. Uh, we How? offer other options as well that are that are a bit cheaper or more okay. expensive, um, depending on what your kind of price range is. But we use AI to identify all of those products mm -hmm. and uh, enable that on, on hundreds, thousands of hours of, of content. How do you guys do that? So, I mean, in, you know, the nitty gritty of it is simply <laughs> we have lots of data, yeah, lots language. of images, okay. and uh, we tell the AI, learn from these images, and we train it on massive machines mm -hmm. over hundreds of hours, and uh, the AI slowly teaches itself, learns on its own uh, how to understand those images, the video, the actual frames from the movie or the TV show, mm -hmm. again, across hundreds of hours of TV shows, so that it can uh, do that automatically. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, Ken, I'd like, us to, I'd like you to help us understand something here. So, let's look at uh, Google, for instance. Yeah? Sure. You can search something today or probably next week. Then, after a couple of days later, you come back and just type how to. It reminds you or it gives you feedback of what you did previously. Or even another instance, which is a common scenario. If you search ab about anything, if it's a product, later on you'll find an ad on Facebook or Instagram, how does that happen? So that uh, is a, uh, the use of data okay. by these advertising companies. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, uh, they're, they're tracking based on your you know, Google username or email address or your Facebook username or your Instagram handle. They're tracking uh, what you've clicked, when you've clicked, in what order. Um, who you've talked to, um, and they are taking that information and saying, okay, let me use some, I don't know if they're, for some of these examples, if they need to use AI, mm -hmm. but I'm sure in some examples they, they really, they are. Mm -hmm. um, let me make a prediction based off of this behavior, online activity, Okay. and let me show some advertisement. Um, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, I won't go into to it too much, mm -hmm. but um, some of the work that I do, which is also related to advertising, um, is kind of in opposition to that kind of form of advertising, which really uses user data a lot mm -hmm. um, and uses kind of this understanding of user behavior a lot to uh, power this advertising solution, rather than that. You know, our company, we focus on looking at the content. So what is the user looking at? Are they watching a movie about um, uh, weddings? Or are they watching a TV show uh, about dating? Mm -hmm. uh, then we can use that. Or are they watching a sports game? And then, so we look at the sports game, not what the user is doing online on Facebook or Instagram or Google, whatever. We look at just the sports game and we say, how can we provide some advertising, uh, some useful information to the user just from that? 
without looking at their data, respecting their privacy, and all of that. Yeah, because they feel like when you're busy studying somewhere else about something else, Google is literally just studying about you. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think, you know, maybe it's not the biggest problem, but one of the concerns is that users are not very, f because it's so new still, you know, even after 20, 20 years, users are not very familiar with how Google is using their data and where their data is going. And so users can't really make an informed decision um, about whether to opt in or to opt out. Um, so, um, and it's actually a free, it's a free site, so that's how they make their money, through exactly. advertisement. Exactly, but if Google is making, you know, a thousand dollars per user per year, mm -hmm. it might be free, which is great, but maybe they could be returning some of that money to the users as well. Oh you know? yes, we'd be so happy. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think, so I think there's, there's a lot at play there, uh -huh. um, but it's a really, really interesting question that's currently, um, working itself out in the ad tech industry. All right, so we have a telecommunication company that gives the ability for voice recognition. Uh, is that also a, a branch of AI, and how does that actually work? Yeah, so the face recognition uh, is, is, is an AI. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way it works is you have uh, some, what we call neural network, um, which looks at an image of a face. Mm -hmm. And it turns that face into a string of numbers, so mm -hmm. maybe 16 numbers. And the numbers are such that, that are produced from that face, mm -hmm. are such that a similar looking face, right, will have similar numbers. Okay. So we compare these numbers with each other, because the AI has digested this face to have some understanding of that face. Mm -hmm. And we compare those numbers to see, are these the same face or not? Mm -hmm. And we do that on a large scale, over hundreds, millions of faces, and that allows us to have a really nuanced understanding of, of a face, okay. of variations in, I don't know, the shape of a nose or your eyes or your, or your mouth or your lips or whatever. But importantly, uh, we don't teach the AI any of this stuff manually. It learns it all by itself. Okay. Is the same thing with the voice recognition as well? Exactly, yes. Okay. So most people confuse the three terminologies. There's AI, then there's machine learning and data science. What's the difference? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be tr honestly, everyone kind of confuses that. Yes. And part of the confusion is that no one really knows what AI is, mm -hmm. right? Because some people because some people think AI is some robot that speaks and acts like a human. Other people think AI is just a facial recognition algorithm. So I won't comment on the AI piece. Mm -hmm. I will say, generally speaking, data science is simply a, the science of analyzing data mm -hmm. using um, statistics, uh, statistical models. So you look at a large batch of data. Uh, let's say it's consumer shopping data, and from that you would do an analysis and you say, okay, what are the most popular categories of products, and uh, what, uh, where should we place products on the shelves in the stores? Mm -hmm. like that. That's data science. It's mm -hmm. analyzing a large amount of data and applying a specific statistical method, um, like a, let's say linear regression or something like that, to that data. All right. Machine learning is. An alg or is a group and family of algorithms that uh, learn from data. Mm -hmm. So they are actually trying to produce specific outputs from data. Um, and AI is probably at the, the top of the machine learning family. All right, so how is uh, artificial intelligence transforming like, the media industry? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because the media industry, at least in the States, is very uh, slow to move. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe, and hopefully that's different here. Um, it's very slow to move. Um, I would say our, our company, our product, is probably one of the more advanced uh, of the companies that are, that are using AI to transform uh, the, the media industry. Um, and uh, there is another way mm -hmm. in which AI is used, which I've started to see lately, which we can use AI now to create images and video, realistic right. looking images and video. All right. um, and so there's recently a show on uh, Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Star Wars show 
Uh, and there was a character from many, many decades ago mm -hmm. uh, that they want to be in this new episode, this new season. But obviously that character, that actor, doesn't look like that now. Mm -hmm. So they use some other actor, some other young looking actor, and they use AI to transform this younger, this other actor's face to look like this other, a completely different actor's face Does it look from like 40 years ago. The cloning. Exactly. Uh -huh. And uh, they also used that to transform his voice mm -hmm. from uh, his older voice to a younger voice. Mm -hmm. And that all, all of that technology is AI. So I think we're going to start to see more and more content that's just created using AI. All right. So as we wind up, I'd like to find out what do you like to do outside uh, work during your leisure time? Yeah, I mean, I like to go for a good run along uh -huh. the, the Brooklyn waterfront in New York. Okay. Um, but um, otherwise, uh, I'm really, really interested in art. Mm -hmm. So going to art galleries and, and uh, museums and visiting those kinds of things in, in New York as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, and travel, I would say. That's, oh, I, and that's why I'm here. Fantastic. We, you're much welcome any other day. Uh, this is home now, right? Yes. Some happen in Yumbani. Yeah. Some hapa, see, this is home. Hapa ni Mumbai. Hapa ni Mumbai. There you go. So Ooh, I, <laughs> you it? got it. I got yes. It. So people, how can people reach out to you? Do you have social media yeah. handles? I think the best way is, uh -huh. is on Twitter. Okay. K E N A Z W A. All right. Thank you very much, Ken Aziva, for creating time to be with us today. Looking at taking us through artificial intelligence and helping us understand how the future will look like. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate you having me. <laughs> All right. So, so guys, make sure you stay tuned. We have uh, another interview coming your way. So we'll be right back. <laughs>